Second Age Aff Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel. Well guys, I've got another video to add to the 200 series maintenance and modification playlist. And that is changing out the water pump on my 200 series Land Cruiser. You wanna know why I'm putting a new water pump on it? How I found out I needed it? And step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it yourself? Stick around. So how did I actually pick the problem? Well, in our recent trip to Tasmania, the temperature reading on the truck was doing some funky things. Normal operating temperature is 80 degrees, plus or minus a couple of degrees. There were instances where I'd be running under normal operating conditions and that temperature would be running around 70 degrees. And alternatively, normal operating conditions and sometimes that temperature would spike up to 90 degrees. Now that immediately told me I probably had a sticking thermostat and that th thermostat was either getting stuck open at times which meant the car was running cold or stuck closed at times which meant the truck was running hot. I never would have picked that on the factory gauge because a factory needle does not move in a meaningful way for those differences in temperature. The only way I would have picked that was with the digital gauge. Let me show you exactly what I mean. There's my water temperature, 71 degrees. And there's my factory gauge and where the needle sits at 71 degrees. So right now with that needle deflection, the car is running about 10 degrees cooler than normal operating conditions. Now we're up to normal operating temperature, water temperature 81 degrees Celsius. And you can see where that needle deflection is and it is almost identical to where it was when we were at 71 degrees. And I won't show it here, but if I get that water temperature up to 90 degrees, again, that needle deflection is going to be sitting pretty much where it's sitting now. So bottom line is that factory gauge barely moves between 20 degrees of water temperature, between 70 degrees and 90 degrees. And without that digital gauge, there's no way in hell I would have been able to determine whether my thermostat was playing up or not. But with the digital gauge, and knowing what normal is for my car, remember that, you gotta know what normal is for your car. Once you've got that line in the sand, if you get crazy deflections on either side of that, either the car is under a lot of load or it's very, very cool outside, or you've got an issue. Because I was running it under normal operating conditions and it was jumping all over the place under those normal conditions, I knew I had an issue with my thermostat. I never ever would have picked that up with the factory gauge. So that sent me down the track of replacing the thermostat as you will see very shortly, this thermostat is actually housed inside of the water pump. This car's got 240,000 kilometers on it now. I figured, heck, if I'm going to be pulling the thermostat off, I might as well go that one step further and replace the water pump at the same time. At 240,000 kilometers, I'm not sure how much life that water pump has got left in it, but I'd say there's less time in front of it than there has been behind it. So that's the reason that I'm gonna change out the thermostat and the water pump. Okay, let's move on to the next stage and actually get the job done and I'll show you step by step. So what you'll need to do this job is obviously a water pump. I've got a genuine pump here. It's part number 16100-59366. What you get in your water pump kit is obviously you get the water pump, you get the gasket that fits on the water pump, and you get your thermostat housing gasket. That genuine water pump kit costs $241 from the Toyota dealer. While you're in there, you would be crazy not to replace the thermostat. So that's exactly what I've got here, a genuine thermostat, part number 909-16-03089. If you buy your thermostat, you don't need to buy the gasket separately. While I'm here, I might as well put the little sucker on. It's just got a little groove on the inside of it and it slips around the perimeter of the thermostat, just like that. What temperature does the thermostat open up? 76 degrees. And that thermostat cost me $29.44 from the Toyota dealer, but you need more to do the job. The other thing that you don't get in this water pump kit is this gasket right here. And Toyota called this a water outlet gasket, part number 16343-51010. That little sucker will set you back $2.56. So it's not expensive, but it does not come with your water pump. Now I suppose you could reuse the old one and just snot this up with some silicone. Go with new gaskets. Now we've got to drain the coolant as the first step. And to do that, believe it or not, you gotta take this guard off or this shroud off. Not only this shroud, but we also have to take our intercooler shroud off. And I think I've shown you guys about a million times how to take this panel off, but for those who haven't been watching or paying attention, you push those little clips down in the center 
and just lift your shroud up a little bit so that they come free and clear and then just take them out. And then to pop them back in, you push the butt of them back in so that that button sits proud like that. And when you pop them back in, you slide them into the hole, you push the button down until it clicks. Out with that guard. Other thing we need to do is pull off this intercooler cover. And to do that, it's simply got two 10 mil dome head nuts on it. I'll show you what they look like. See, just a little dome head nut. My 10 millimeter socket isn't deep enough to fit over top of that dome. So I use a long series 10 mil. Once we get those two nuts off, this cover just lifts up on an angle and then pull towards the grill and off she comes. Next thing you gotta do is pull the bash plates off. I got a combination of aftermarket, this is an ARB bash plate, and the factory bash plates, but they all have to come off. There's one half of the factory bash plate. You might be saying, hey Terry, how come you're laying on your back taking these bash plates off when you got a lift? You just lift the car over your head. And you know what? You'd be absolutely right. But we got a Sparky here who's putting in one of those smart meters at the moment. So he switched the power off to the house and to the shed. So I am powerless to do anything about it. Second half of the bash plate. Well, hello there, guys. Got my three bash plates off. Time to drain the coolant. Okay, there's a couple of bleeders that we have to take off to allow that coolant to drain out. One of them is here on the top of the radiator. That's simply a 5 8 square, but be very careful when you're taking this sucker off because this is one of the areas that the 200 series radiators fail. They crack around here. All right, there's one. Obviously, we'll loosen the lid on the expansion tank. That's number two. This is the last of the breathers we want to get to. That's sitting underneath of your inner cooler on the driver's side or the, or the right-hand side of the vehicle. And that'll help clear the vacuum when you're draining the engine block, but more importantly, when you're filling your vehicle back up, you gotta pop that off to get the air out of there. So don't forget that little sucker. Now there's two drain points under the car where you drain your coolant from. One is to drain your radiator, and that's using this little petcock here. And there's also a spot to drain the coolant out of your block. So let's start with the radiator first. Undoing that, coolant's gonna come out of that little hole there. All right, that drain process is finished. Now I'm gonna put this petcock back in and tighten that sucker up. So when I go and fill this car up with coolant, it doesn't piss all over my shed floor because I forgot to put it in. And that's how much came out of the cooling system. That's a 10 liter bucket. And I'd say that's probably about nine liters in there. Okay, let's drain the engine. Now the petcock to drain the motor is right there. And there's a little 10 millimeter bolt on the end of it. You'll need to use a 3 8 drive or even a quarter drive because there's not a lot of room in there to swing your spanner. And just loosen that bolt off until coolant starts draining out. All right, I'll tighten that sucker up now. That's all done draining. And I'll hit it with a little bit of brake clean to clean off all that red coolant so that when I eventually go to fill this thing back up again, if I've got a leak, I'll notice it as a new leak and not something left over from the drain process. That looks good. All right, let's go to the top side. Okay, we gotta get a couple of things out of the road before we can really start on this job. And the first one is the belt. So you get yourself a big breaker bar with a 17 mil socket and you pop it on the nut to relieve the tension off the tensioner. And then there you go, we got our belt free. There's your tensioner pulley. And that nut that you want to put your bar on is right beside the pulley. It's all part of the pulley assembly. All right, get this belt out of here. One snaky belt. Disconnect this plug off of your coolant temperature sensor. Now, just for ease of filming more than anything else, I'm going to take this intake pipe off. You do not need to do that to get down to the water pump. The water pump is located there, but it'll just open things up a little bit and allow a little bit easier filming. So I'm taking one for the team here, folks. Set that up out of the road. I'll pop a couple of rags in these intake pipes. Knowing my luck, I'll shoot some sort of shit up in there inside of them. Okay, that's good. Now the last item I need to take off and get out of the road is this fan hub. 
because in behind this pulley is one of the bolts to the water pump and you'll never get it off without pulling that off. And the way to get these suckers off is you jam some sort of a lever in between the bolts and the hub and you get your spanner on there and you simply crack them. That one went without a fight. There are 12 millimeter bolts on here. Just like that. All right, I'll see you when I get the remainder of them off. Now, this isn't gonna make any difference whatsoever, but I am gonna mark this pulley and mark the hub, and I will put it back together the way that I got it. Why do you need to do that? No, you don't really need to do that. That's just me being a little bit anal. Okay, now I'll just see if I can get this fan hub off. I think she's coming. There she goes. Just tuck it up by the radiator, get it out of the road, and then this pulley comes off. There we have it. One water pump pulley. All right, now we gotta take this little unit off and that does not form part of your water pump, but it does bolt to the water pump, so it needs to come off. Grab your channel locks and slide your clamps up the radiator hose. Kind of a neat fact. I know these are called channel locks in Australia, but in Canada, another name for them is water pump pliers. And guess what I'm working on? Now this little guy is held on with two 12 millimeter bolts. And both of those bolts are identical in size, so you can't screw them up. Sweet. Okay, let me see if I can wrestle this guy out of here now. Here she comes. That is the beauty of a well-maintained cooling system. Look at that. Like the day she came out of the factory. Awesome. Set that guy aside. Now there's two ways you can take this water pump off. There's a hard way and a harder way. So I'm gonna take the hard way. So the harder way is to undo this coolant pipe which runs down to the lower radiator hose. That's got three bolts on it down there that are very, very difficult to access. You can get to them, but they're a bitch. The other way is to unbolt your water pump and then take a Torx bit and undo these two studs. There's one here and there's one down here. That'll allow you to take the water pump out without having to run it along the length of that bolt because what will happen is the thermostat housing will interfere with this pipe because remember we haven't taken the bolts off this pipe because it's rigid so if you've got a torx bit i recommend taking out these studs after you run the bolts off if you don't not only will you need to undo these two bolts off of the thermostat you need to do a couple more down that pipe so that this pipe can move and shift all right let's undo our water pump bolts and there are about 11 of them in there i think i counted There's a couple of tricky bolts here that are kind of tucked in behind pulleys. So you gotta get yourself a extension with a little bit of a wobble on it because you're gonna attack them from a bit of an angle. Now the bit to get that stud out is called an E7 and they're not in there very tight at all. I marked on my new water pump where these little suckers are located so I know what place to put them back in. There we have it stud out okay let's see if i can crack this oh easy as nice one now i'm looking at it and there are two hoses holding this on yet so i'll dig those two hoses out i'm not going to be able to film it because they're just too difficult to see but one's there and the second one is immediately beneath it okay i got those hoses off and i'm not gonna lie it was not easy but it is possible there's our thermostat and here comes our water pump Hallelujah. Now I'm going to clean off that mating surface and I've just got a rag that's soaked in a little bit of brake cleaner and that rubbery gasket stuff from the original gasket is coming right off. Going right straight back to bare cast. But look inside that cast area. That is absolutely beautiful. There is no hint of corrosion there at all. Okay, there's my two water pumps. Now I've got to prep this new one a little bit. Before I go ahead and pop it in there. First thing is this hose here, which is oriented in that direction. Next thing, this bolt here is actually captive. It sits behind the fan pulley. So you've got to pop that into your new housing before you start. Some of these bolts have got some sort of a sealant on them. So, so they must go all the way through to the water passages. So I'm gonna take a little bit of RTV and coat those threads before I run them in. This old water pump is in excellent condition. Have a look at this. Look at that. 250,000 kilometers on this thing. And look at the shape of that. 
That is just brilliant. Regular servicing. That'll do it every time. Now we'll grab our genuine thermostat. And here's a tip for these thermostats. If you're mounting them in a horizontal plane, doesn't matter. You can put them in any way you want. If you're mounting them in a vertical plane, that little bleeder valve right there needs to be oriented to the top. So that when you fill your engine up with coolant, as that coolant level rises, it allows air to bleed past that little bleeder valve. So if you've got a vertically mounted thermostat and you can't bleed the air out of the bloody thing or you're having some overheating problems and you can't chase it down, it could be as simple as orienting your thermostat the right way around. All right, I got my mating surface all cleaned up where the gasket goes on all faces. It's time to install this water pump. Now, a lot of things kind of got to go right for you to get this thing in here. By taking these studs out, that water pump fits in there relatively easy. Now, I'll just start a couple of bolts in here to hold it in place. I've got my thermostat oriented the right way, vent side up, and just looking at the bolts in the studs, it appears as though the long bolts have got the RTV on the threads, and the short bolts do not. So I'll do the exact same thing when I put this back together. Running that second stud in now. There we go. And that's the amount of RTV that I'm putting on the end of these long bolts. It's not a lot. I'm just sort of copying what Toyota did when I pulled these things out of it. All right, I'm going to run down the remainder of these bolts. There's nothing too, too riveting from a filming point of view. Just a matter of running them down and tightening them up. These bolts are all torqued to 24 Newton meters. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to swing my torque wrench in there because it's a big half inch drive sucker. So. I'll just have to use the FT methodology. It wasn't too difficult, just need a variety of ratchets and wobbles, etc., to get to all of them. My tip is when you're tightening them up, count them because there's 11 of them and you don't want to miss one. So as you're going around the perimeter, count off that you've got all 11 of them. Plus the two here on your thermostat housing pipe, that's number 12 and number 13. Now, time to put this housing back on. That's the new gasket that I got from Toyota. I already showed you the part number. Now these tangs that hold it in place, there's four of them, go towards the housing. So that just pops in place like that. And sweet, those little tangs hold that gasket on so we don't need to fight that little sucker. Now this should be interesting. We've got to line three things up at the same time. That needs to go down where it's going to bolt in and these two hoses need to go in place. So let me start with that hose then I'll move on to this hose and then we'll line our bolt holes up. And you know what? I think that actually worked. Now I'm going to hook these two pipes back up. One of them is here. The other one is right down at the very bottom, just below the crank pulley. There's no way I'll be able to film that and work in there, so you'll just have to trust me that I get these things put together. And if you don't trust me, well, when we leak test this thing and run it up to temperature, that'll be the telltale. Okay, I got those two hoses on. The top one is easy enough. The bottom one is a little bit of a bugger to get to, but it's doable. Hose clamp number one, right back where it came from. Hose clamp number two, right back where it came from. Okay, now we pop our pulley back on, orient it so my mark is at my mark, and now my fan. Okay, I'll pop my four nuts on, tighten them up, and we'll meet up again when I get this finished. Okay, it's time now to put my snake belt back on. I've just pulled this one out of my spares box for a very good reason. As a side issue, if you're looking to get a new belt, there's your part number, 99369-K2250. But the reason I pulled this out of my spares box is on the back of it, I've glued the route that the belt takes. So I'm gonna use that as my guide to put this thing back on the car. You got your alternator, you got an idler pulley, you got a water pump, you got your AC, you got your fan pulley, you got your crank, and you got your tensioner. So that's how this little sucker loops around. Okay, let's get that belt on. One handy thing to do if you do have your belt off is just give each of your pulleys a spin and just see whether there's any bearing noise there or whether you can feel anything. Now that one's gonna be perfect, obviously, because that's our brand new water pump. Air compressor feels good. The fan feels good. Tensioner feels good which it should, because that's a reasonably new tensioner. Idler pulley, good. Alternator, good. And that's been replaced reasonably recently. And of course, you can't spin your crank pulley. If you can, you're much stronger than I am. Okay, let me get this belt on. Alrighty, that's our belt back in place. Next step, I'll put this intake piping back together and we are ready to kick this little puppy in the guts. 
right, now I'm going to top up the coolant. In the first five liters, I'm just gonna dump straight in. I have the breather off on the radiator and the breather is still off on the engine block as well. Now my next five liters, I'm gonna take it much slower and I'm watching that bleeder valve underneath the intercooler. And as soon as I see coolant start to bubble out of that, I'll stop my fuel process and I'll reinstall that blanking bung. And there we have it, coolant coming out that little pipe. And block them off with our little bung. Okay, our intake is done. We got those two clamps done up, that clamp done up, and the two bolts done up that hold it down. On the water pump, all 11 bolts holding it to the block are down. These two bolts with the thermostat housing are down. Our belt is back in place. The two bungs, one on the radiator and one on the block drain, have been tightened back up on the bottom side. Little plug under the intercooler is done. Plug on the top of the radiator is done. Radiator's topped up with coolant. And we don't have any red puddles under the car at the moment. Last but not least, click our coolant temperature sensor back in and kick her in the guts. All right, I've run that engine up to operating temperature for about 10 minutes now. The system's fully pressurized. I can feel it in that hose. I've got no leaks that I can see at the moment, which is fantastic. I'll let this sucker cool down. It'll probably draw the excess fluid out of this header tank into the system. Top it up if necessary. And all things going well, we will have successfully addressed the cooling system. If your water pump fails, where it normally leaks, See if I can line this up properly. See that little hole there? That's called a telltale hole. And that is an open passage between the seal and the shaft. And what happens when your seal starts to go out in your water pump, it leaks past the seal and drips out that telltale hole and dribbles down here. And you usually see a pile of coolant laying on the ground under your car. That is designed that way. It's meant to leak there when that seal starts to get worn on that shaft. This particular job is not difficult. You can do it with normal hand tools, apart from that Torx bit, which you may not have. If you follow this video step by step, I've got no doubt you'll be able to do something like this yourself. All up, water pump, thermostat, coolant, all the rest of the bits. I probably got a little under $400 in this job. I'm not sure what a shop would charge you to swap out a water pump, but you can be guaranteed it'll certainly be north of that. Check out the 200 series modification and maintenance playlist for other goodies just like this one. Now, while you guys go off and do whatever you're going to do, I'm going to be replacing these bonnet gas struts. You can see the stick holding my bonnet up. These things are well past their use date. Time to throw some new ones in. Until next vid, keep the shiny side up, everybody. Bye now.